All right, what's up, guys? I'm Jay, and I'm here with my good friend Brian Barrett. He's the author of Gin Illuminated, and we've had him on the show before. And we're 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 back again to talk about the gin, mainly his experiences in working with them. How you doing, bro? I'm doing really well, thank you. Th thank you for uh, inviting me back on the show, which is great. Yeah, man, uh, absolutely. Uh, thank you for coming. Yeah, I love it. I love it, which is good. Um, like I always see us, our, our meeting as a kind of really positive event because I learn from you and hopefully, you know, we can exchange information, which is really what it's all about. Well, I've learned a great deal from yourself and um, yeah, you, you've turned me on to some things that you know, I, I can't even really mention because they're private, but as far as my own personal workings, um, I've, I've uh, done a lot of stuff with the information you've given me and uh, I find it true and accurate. So I, I love having you on. Definitely, definitely love picking your brain as far as uh, the discoveries and breakthroughs you've made with these, with these entities we call gin and uh, give you guys an example. It was just a few minutes before we started recording. Uh, Brian here was, was actually doing a live ritual for me right here on, on, on the, on Skype. And uh, that's not the first time you've done something like that for me. You can literally like feel the, energy coming through the screen is it's weird how it, how a computer screen is such a powerful energetic link but i mean it's you know entities can travel through technology and electricity we we're talking about that a little bit too so uh, yeah always always fascinating man cool which is really good so yeah i mean we're going to talk about the gin today um i this is going to sound quite strange i would say that um a lot of people confuse gin and demon, yeah? yeah. Uh, the demon is a completely different entity to the gin. They are both extremely powerful, don't get me wrong. But the one that one has to be very careful with is the gin. Um, in a nutshell, they don't like us, okay? If they work with us, it's because usually there's a deal, okay? There's a deal. They get something that they want. Now, the, the thing that they essentially want is they want your soul, okay? But they can't take your soul because it's your essence, it's your power. However, they can trick you into you giving their soul, yeah, or giving you your own soul. Mean, like, like, when I say soul, I mean, like, to me, you are your soul. That's your, your very essence, your energy, your consciousness. That's all. Yeah, that's like, what they soul. want. So they, essentially, they want. They, want to, they want to devour you, essentially. Yeah, well, it's, what, what they want to do is, this is this was told to me by a fourth generation Sufi. This guy was damn powerful. And he says, you have to understand that they want you to make a pact. The minute you make a pact, you lose your soul. And this is why in the Catholic Church, they pray for the dead. Now, the reason why they pray for the dead, because if somebody has absentmindedly through some time in their life or purposely through some time in their life, has given their soul to the, the jinn, the jinn, because the soul is indestructible, they use it as a weapon, okay? And they will not let it go. They will just keep it and they use it because you have to understand the jinn fight among themselves all the time and if they have an indestructible weapon they use that indestructible weapon the unfortunate thing is is that you know that you're being used as an in indestructible weapon and you cannot stop this yeah so essentially it's a life of hell if you wish yeah so that's their game that's the ultimate game the ultimate game is to get your soul and they will trick you into giving the soul. So this is the one thing that you have to remember that when you're dealing with these entities, that their objective at first is to take energy from you. 
on this plane of consciousness. But the more that you trust them and the more that you sign yourself over to their system is the more likely that you will end up captive for eternity by them. You know, this is not a joke. This is something which none of the books mention because very, very few people know about it. I was lucky to learn about it through this fourth generation Sufi. So, you know, like if you know occultists who have died and stuff like that, literally pray for their soul because that's the only thing that will relinquish them from being captive by the jinn. This is not a joke. This is this is a hundred percent real, unfortunately. So, so uh, as far as these, you know, gin masters, we've we've discussed them quite a bit in the past. Uh, you've even introduced me to a couple of them. Like, how how do they go about safely working with these entities without losing? What we would call the soul. Well, I know a lot of gin masters uh, over the years, and. Not one of them has had what you call a peaceful death. Okay, yeah. Usually the death is extremely violent. The Sufi masters who work with the jinn are extremely pious, extremely pious. Uh, they don't swear, they don't drink, they don't do anything. And they hang on to a, a very sort of pure side of themselves so when they die they ascend they don't go into the realm of of the jinn now there is another way of doing it and this is something that i would recommend to anybody who works in dark paths there is a hack you can do um Remember, I introduced you to Kali. Kali has been a shaman for over 40 years. The hack is this. You take 5-MeO-DMT, but you have to take it with a, a shaman like Kali. And what happens is, is when you're in the realm of the 5-MeO-DMT, she takes your soul to a higher level of consciousness and you clean the soul you remove all the entities from the soul because essentially you die then when you come back to this realm of consciousness all the deals all everything that you've made has been cancelled because you've died kali has cleansed the soul and then you come back to this level of consciousness with a clean soul. The same thing used to happen in the Bible. When John the Baptist used to baptize somebody, he held them under, under the water till they lost consciousness. And then the DMT enters into the, in, into the head and, and in, into the soul. And then he pulls them out just before they die, and then the whole body and the soul is cleansed. That's the hack. This hack has been known since the time of, um, like, like I said, um, John the Baptist. This is one of the big reasons why Jesus went to him. This was not to do with, um, remember when he came out of the water, the sound, it said, this is my son. It, it didn't mean that literally what it meant was that he, his soul was free again. So that's a really good thing. So if you're going through a really bad time, you're having sort of like demonic entities bothering you. This is the easiest, I say easy, it's very difficult. This is one of the best ways to, if you like, reboot your, your, your consciousness and your soul but you have to do it with a really experienced um, shaman because essentially he, she will go with you on your journey and make sure that you, that you cleanse your soul. Okay, I don't know if you've heard of that technique. Uh, well, well, no, I mean, I've, I've heard of the 
MEO DMT, and uh, you know, you've, you've uh, sent me an interview that you and Kali did a while back. So, I mean, I had the, a general understanding of what that was and, and what was done. Um, but no, uh, as far as the technique you're, you're talking about, I, this is the first time I've heard of that. So, uh, when you say when you say Jesus, do you mean like like Jesus, the black magician, or like yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah. Jesus, the magician. Yeah, that's why he went to he went to the Baptist because he understood that the Baptist would hold him under till he almost died. The DMT would flood into the body. It, he would then go on the spiritual journey. Um, I've done this journey. It's extremely painful and it's extremely frightening. Everything leaves you that shouldn't be there. Then you come back and you are absolutely full of love and you are connected to the universe. Um, essentially, everything is gone, but you have to do it with the right, you know, with, with, with the right um, shaman, realistically. Uh, the 5 meo is supposed to be a lot more potent than like ayahuasca, correct? Ayahuasca is warm beer compared to that stuff. I'm, I'm not I'm not disputing that that, that that ayahuasca doesn't work, but the point being is 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 that the um, five meo DMT, it's the closest thing I can say to it. It's like being sat on a rocket. Okay, there's no halfway house with it. Literally, yeah. one minute you are alive, the next minute essentially you are dead. But what happens is most people who are not skilled. In, in 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 occultism in meditation will stay in what they call the the elf realm the machine elf realm which essentially is your ego you have to go through that realm and go into what is your true consciousness yeah and hence okay. what happens then is is that you go into a a universe yeah because Realistically, um, Crowley said it, you are a star. So essentially, when you go through that, you actually meet the planet. You become the planet that you really are. You become that stardust. You become part of the universal consciousness. Then you have to come back. Coming back is really difficult. And then when you come back, you're absolutely full of love. There is no traces of anything demonic or anything that's negative towards your psychology. But in my opinion, it can only be done with um, a, an expert shaman, because essentially they will go with you to make sure that you go through the realms of um, distraction and illusion. Yeah. So that's, that's how you can get rid of that. I've, uh, you know, I, I did an ayahuasca journey uh, a couple of years ago for the first time, and that was extremely intense. So I can only imagine, <laughs> I can only imagine what this stuff would be like. Um, I would be, I would, I'd be pretty intimidated going into that. You know, it's like I wasn't. Uh, you know, I, I had a great experience when I took ayahuasca. I was probably like the only person that had a good experience there. Like people were thrashing and round, screaming, puking, shitting themselves, like just having a really horrible time. And I was like, giggling, listen to that. I was like, every time somebody puke, I'd cheer them on. I'm like, yeah, it hurts <laughs> that shit. But um, no, my experience was totally, until the end, like when I was starting to, starting to come down from it, you know, I kind of went into, I, I wouldn't even call it a dark place. I'd call it a place of self-reflection where I had to like really look at the ugly side of myself and the shit that, that I am ashamed of or was ashamed of and uh, accept that about myself. Like I had to... Uh, I had to come to appreciate the stains on my hands, you know, uh, and for it, it, that's a weird way to describe it. But uh, I did come out of very beneficial uh, or having a beneficial experience. But it was also like a really euphoric, magical experience, too, especially like in the peak of it. Like I've never experienced a euphoria like that. And it was the, the first time that I've actually raised Kundalini. And I don't like bringing Kundalini up in your chest or whatever. I mean, no, it's it's like a it's like a rocket flying up your ass and out the top of your head, and you pass, <laughs> you fucking pass out. Like you literally go unconscious for for a minute or two. But um, yeah, so I'm I'm interested to try this. Uh, I'm a little little uh, nervous to try it. If someone um, wanted, yeah, to if if you're not nervous to try it, then then I would think that you were probably crazy. Yeah, because at some stage 
you have to die. OK, yeah. you know, and, and I, I was at that stage. I thought. Can I do it? And I said to myself. There's no point in not doing the full experience. And when I died, I can tell you it was such a strange experience. I knew I was dead. OK, yeah, there was nothing of me left. All right, you know, what, what was me was nothing. And it was at that stage that I became linked to the um, universal consciousness for a better word of it, um, or what you're saying, this high euphoric state or the ultimate Kundalini trip. But this was definitely the universal consciousness. Um, but that stage before doing it and you've got to say to yourself, OK, I've got to let go of everything that is really me. Uh, you know, you, you've got to have some balls to do that. Because, you know, you're saying, right, I will die. To put it bluntly. Yeah. But but that's the only thing that gets rid of all the demonic influences in your life and all the sort of negativity. And as you said, you know, like you have to face that ugly side of yourself. And, and I think that that's probably one of the hardest things to do is to face that ugly side of yourself because we're all ugly. And being reminded of that is, 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 uh, yeah, it's, it, nobody wants to be reminded of that. But once you've gone through that and then you say, okay, I'm willing to die. Oof, yeah. Yeah, it, I, when I think back to it, I just think really how frightened I was, but I still did it, if that makes any sense. I'll admit I was frightened because I knew I was going to die. Well, it's, uh, it, you almost have to be, I think you have to be willing to, to risk everything in order to gain something that's truly worth something, you know. And, um, you know, I, I wonder, you know, say you had someone that, that, I wouldn't say suicidal, like someone that wasn't going to hurt themselves, but someone that genuinely had a death wish. They're just like, you know what? I'm ready to check out. Yeah, and they're looking for a way out, you know, honorable way to check out. Do you think if they were to do something like that and experience that, that they would come back with like a newfound taste for their life? Yeah, well, there, well that's one of Callie's jobs. Callie works with um, the super addicted. Yeah, you know, the, the, the sort of 10 year heroin addict who essentially, uh, I mean, regardless of what your audience thinks, if you're taking heroin for 10 years or you're an alcoholic for 10 years, then essentially your soul has been invaded. You know, you, you are fully controlled by the demon. Yeah, you know, you, you've lost control. You know, the demon has you. And the demon wants you to commit suicide because that way it gets your soul or the jinn wants you to commit suicide because that way it gets your soul. So you do this and you actually physically die and you come back, then that demon is gone. You know, like these guys come back after 10 years of taking heroin like there's no tomorrow and they don't want to touch it. They so they don't want to touch it. Just gone. Yeah. yeah. And, and the pharmaceutical industries know this, but they still won't make this treatment legal. Because essentially, you know, where essentially, could you so, sorry, sorry, Jess. Sorry, I you. I was saying, where could you do this legally? At Mexico. Oh, OK, OK. So if you go to Mexico, but what uh, if, if you're going to do it, I, I will contact you with the proper shamans because a lot of it, right, it, it's expensive. It's like uh nearly a thousand dollars with some of these proper shamans yeah um paid almost three grand for my ayahuasca journey so i think right. it's going to be more than that yeah yeah well, yeah so like it's a lot of money for these guys but but these guys can actually take you on this journey you know the, the, there's only maybe three or four uh, in in the entire you know mexican peru region who can actually do it but if you, you know, but it's, it's, I, I would strongly recommend it to any occultist if, if they, you know, want to get rid of this, you know, sort of um, constant, if you like, attacking by demons and stuff like this, because, you know, like, 
Earth. If you are an occultist, and just say, for example, you drink, a drink is called a call because all the low spirits come in. And if you don't fight them, then the low spirits bring the, 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 the really nasty spirits in. And before you know where you've got gone, then you know, you've, lost, you, you've lost what it is to be human because you've allowed something into your consciousness. And, and for what I've seen, and for, uh, I've known Kali for like a long, long time, and literally, you know, this stuff is miraculous. It gets rid of that, you know, seriously, it gets rid of that. But one, yeah. you know, you have to remember that it, it gets in there because essentially, you, you know, you're doing things that are dangerous. When you're working with demons, it's dangerous. When you're working with jinn, it's dangerous. And everybody makes mistakes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't think there's any uh, black magicians out there that would claim that they've never made a mistake. Um, we, you know, I've, I've definitely made my share of mistakes and you pay for them dearly. Um, you learn from them if you're smart, but uh, not everybody comes back from it, you know. Yes, uh, it's, absolutely. It's no secret. It's, it's, I don't talk about my personal life really on social media, and whatnot, even though plenty of others do that for me. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's no, it's no secret that, that this past year I've been through some shit, man. Like I've been through some some devastating things this past year. Um, um, still here, still kicking, still doing good. But uh, I don't know. I feel like it's time for me to take the next step in my spiritual development. I'm not saying it's going to be the DMT, but that that is something that I'm considering after talking to you. Um, it might be good for me. Well, yeah, it's, I mean, you've done the, you've done the ayahuasca, but you know, uh, I think the only thing I've got to say about the DMT is, is like I said, the ayahuasca compared to the DMT is one beer. Yeah, it, you know, and, and like it's, and that's why you need to have the right person with you because when you enter that journey, um, it's it's a roller coaster, and once it's started, you can't get off it. You know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're. They call it. Uh, they call it ayahuasca time. Like once you drink it, you're on ayahuasca time, and you. You know, it was weird for me. Like the, you know, the the experience lasted, you know, six hours. It seemed like it was days. Like I kept waiting for the sun to come up. You know, once I started to get to where I could, you know, actually walk and stand, and uh, you know, it was like only two in the morning. I'm like, what? We I've been laying here all night. Like it seems like like days have passed. So I finally got what they meant by the, you know, ayahuasca times. Like you lose your concept of time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You go into a different realm of consciousness. It's you know, but you have to remember that sort of um, this realm of consciousness you would only enter otherwise if you were sort of in a state of of dying or death. Yeah. And you know, and it's and because you go into that stage and be, and if you're led properly on the journey and you get that euphoria and you get that and you cleanse the whole body when you come back to this realm of consciousness then then whatever demons that were were, were feeding on you should be gone will be gone you know it, it, it's like uh, mckenna said there are very few people who will do 5 meo twice Apart from Callie, who's done it, God knows how many times, but she's just she's just exceptional, to put it bluntly. Yeah, um, she she have to be. You know, I'm, I I would do ayahuasca again, but I haven't been in any hurry to. You know, because especially with the things I've been through in the past years, like I know I'm ready for a purge. You know, like I know when I do that again, I'm going to be one of those people puking and crying. And uh, you know, whereas before I didn't really have anything to purge. I'd already been purged, you know, through my own like path working and stuff that I'd done myself. So it was more like just about introducing me to the, the mother, the spirit, mother Aya and, and to the power that that medicine held. And I had a great experience, but I don't know if it would be great if I were to do that right now, because I do have like a lot of emotional trauma that I'm working through myself. And um, yeah, I don't know. I, I just might get that contact from you. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I can, I can, I, I'll get hold of uh, Kelly if I can, and I'll, I'll see who she recommends in Mexico. Um, like I said, you know, the, unfortunately, because there's so much money involved in it, a lot of the gangsters 
do the tripping now because essentially it's just big money. But the trouble is, is they, they give the trip to the guy and the guy goes on the journey and he ends up wherever he ends up. You know, he doesn't get the full spiritual experience, you know. Yeah, that's, that's kind of a good warning disclaimer for people watching this. Like, don't don't just go off to the first person you find. I'd definitely be careful where you go, especially because, um, yeah, yeah, you can get taken advantage of for sure. Absolutely, 100 percent. And this is, you know, this is once again the sort of the power of the jinn and the demon, something which should be beautiful, something which should be really, you know, awe inspiring. Now, the worst people in society, your gangsters, your hoodlums are now doing this, you know, so essentially, you know, they, they take what is beautiful and make it ugly. Um, so, you know, like I said, it's, you know, if one is an occultist, one has to be all the time very wary uh, to everything because it's finding source material, it's finding people who can do it, it's understanding what you are going to do. And even if you do all that, you're still going to make mistakes. So, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's something that you, you really have to take on board that, you know, if you're going to be an occultist, if you're going to work with the jinn, if you're going to work with the demons, then you, you have to understand that um, in this incarnation, maybe you're going to live sort of 60, 70 years. These guys have been doing it for thousands of years. Yep. <laughs> you know, so, you yeah. know. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I do agree that like addiction and things like that are, are, are probably mostly caused by what I, I call them parasites. I don't call them demons. To, to me, demons are my allies. They're teacher. You know, demon means teacher. Um, I, agree, but, I, I agree. I agree. But but the thing is, is 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 what you have to be wary of is 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 it a teacher that has come to you? Yeah, well, that's where you have to. Yeah, you you can definitely get taken advantage of by by or. Uh, you know what they call tricksters or, or parasitic entities. You know that make you feel warm and fuzzy when you first meet them, and then yeah, they 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 get they really they really a lot of them to me they look like look like grub worms with like tentacles like a squid would have. And they just kind of like dig those tentacles into people and then gradually just sink in and become like a tumor. You know, and they might actually grow like a cancer tumor or something like that. Then they'll have physical pain in that part of their body. They develop addictions. And it also will affect people around them to cause people to mistreat you and cause you pain and harm so that they can feed off your pain and harm. And it's like a tick, you know, They're like the more you suffer, the bigger this fucking thing gets. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's, that's something that I've, I've done a lot is help people get rid of those things. But I still got to watch out for them myself if I get into a, a, a low vibrational state, which, you know, going through traumatic in your personal life will definitely leave you more vulnerable. So, I mean, that's when you need to, you know, protect yourself more than ever. And, um, you've given me a lot of good insight on how to do that as well. So, um, I mean, I work with uh, demons, I work with angels, I even work with some djinn, um, you know, mainly the, the ones that, that you've put me uh, or, or directed me towards. And I've had really good experiences most of the time. Um, really the only times I've gotten myself into a pickle is when I'm working with someone that was like strictly right hand path, you know, I find that those are often the people that will introduce you to these predators and these, these fucking parasites, you know, and uh, you just gotta be really careful, um, really careful who you let walk you or guide you into something, you know, a hundred percent, hundred percent. And that includes yourself. Sorry. That oh, includes yeah. yourself. You know, yeah, you know, it's, it's, um, there are people, you know, I mean, like, this is one of the things that, that people don't understand with, like, the gin. Like, you'll often get people buy a gin ring online. Yeah. Okay. I've got a gin ring. I can, you know, I've got, I've got the, the power of a gin ring. Okay. Great. Why is that gin ring for sale? I, something uh, like that. I mean, I've, I, I've, you know, you, you know, I've purchased a gin ring for the purpose of protection. Um, but as far as you know, getting a getting a ring that's going to give you special powers, like if that shit was real, they wouldn't sell it. If you ask me, I wouldn't. 
something that gave me special powers. Would you? Well, no. I mean, this this ring that I that I wear, this one, this was made for me by a proper Sahir um, jeweler magician. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when I first got it, I could wear it all the time. And he said to me, he said, oh, you can wear it all the time. He says, that's really strange. He says, you know, he says, usually he said, he says, I've got one. He says, I can only wear it whenever I do a ritual. Yeah. OK. Um, and over time, I can only wear it when I do a ritual. Otherwise, it's just too painful to wear. You know, it, it's um, it's. I can only control it for so long before it starts controlling me, if that makes any sense, you know, so essentially I, I, I take it off. Um, I only use it when I want to use it, you know, and generally speaking, I ask the rings permission before I put it on and before I put it off. Um, but like I said, it's sort of these are very, very rare um that they they, they only they only make them for adepts um they i've got to admit i don't really know how it works um it's it uh, on on the side of the ring it's got like uh arabic letters and the the letters relate to the numbers and how you use those letters and the numbers will then call the 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 entity that you want. Yeah, OK. It, it, um, like, you know, for example, uh, this goes back to a very ancient book, which was the uh, Shams al Maraf, yeah, which essentially deals with um, number squares. It deals with um, planetary aspects. It does it deals with absolutely everything because essentially when they make a ring like this it has to be a, a special material the stone has to be a special stone the 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 letters and the words have to relate to the stone have to relate to the ring when you concentrate and meditate on the ring and 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 the stone then you bring forth the entity that that you want and you bring it into this realm of consciousness for a time and then uh, unfortunately this is what they don't tell you in the books once you brought the entity through it doesn't go away okay you know that's that's the downside you know so so if you bring a gene entity through it does not go back it stays. End of story. So don't summon one unless you want to make friends permanently. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> More or less, yeah. And it, and it wants to make friends with you. Um, you know, it's it's um, it's it, it's 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 you know, it's a strange situation that you know this is this is what drives people insane who go like you know the, the book that I mentioned. Um, it's banned in God knows how many countries, all Arab countries. Uh, people who have used these spells and used the systems of it, they usually pull through some type of gin which they can't get rid of. Uh, and it's not funny when it starts burning your house down. Th this is documented. This isn't some, you know, some blah blah story that someone said because they've seen it from this this is you can look it up on the internet you can look it up on serious newspapers from these countries uh, like lebanon where these gins start fires in people's houses and the um agencies that put out fires come down wet the house down again and they start again uh, this, this is documented. That's pretty intense. I definitely don't want to don't want to summon anything that's going to set my house on fire. You know, I want something that, that wants to work with me and, and is willing to to be healthy, 
have a healthy partnership, healthy allyship. Yeah. Well, that, yeah. That's the first thing that that, that, that you must understand that, that that when you're working with a gin, that 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 your ambition and its ambition is the same. Okay, and you know, like it, it, it you have to make sure that it understands and you understand what your limits are, what you actually want, what it wants from you, and you build this relationship. For example, um, one of the gym masters that we both know, who in my opinion is one of the most powerful gym masters I know, um, he has the gin bottle and the gin bottle is full of genie. He has to feed them. He feeds them very exotic um, uh, incense. Some he has to feed cat blood. Some he has to feed dog blood. Some he has to feed human blood to keep them in that realm of that gin bottle. Um, the deal he has with them is, is that the moment he stops feeding them is the moment they leave. Um, and he's, you know, so for him to keep the gin in that, in this gin, gin bottle, he has to feed them. But that means buying doves, that means catching cats, that means catching dogs, and that means buying human blood from a, a hospital to feed, you know, to feed the, you know, to feed the darker gins. It, uh, you know, it's, it's quite a trial. It's not something, oh, you know, it's not like, oh, I'll feed it this week, I can't be bothered next week. Uh, but he is, he is a Sufi and he set up this deal with them that while he feeds them, they will stay. But the moment he stops feeding them, that they will go away. That's the pact he, he's made with them. The pact, you know, but most Sufis, uh, sorry, pe most people who are not trained in Sufism will just make any pact. And of course, that is where the problem starts. Not understanding yeah. what they're dealing with. That uh, sounds like some pretty intense work and a lot to maintain. I don't think many people would. Uh, be willing to maintain a relationship like that. People are too lazy, um, to put it bluntly. You know, it's uh, it's hard to it's hard. To, they will actually like you know they'll make an agreement with an entity. They'll be working a pact with say a daemon or even an angel, and they'll say, okay, I'm going to give you, I'm going to offer you my blood at your altar. You know, once a week. You know, you'd be surprised how many people will end up not doing that. They'll make a pact, then they don't fulfill it, and then they wonder why things fall apart. So, um, yeah, if you're going to agree to something like that, you better be willing to, to, to get out there, catch a cat or whatever you agreed to, you know? Yeah, it's, 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 a, very, it's a very strict business. Um, I, I've known people who have broken packs and their lives have been destroyed, yep. you know, literally been destroyed. I've known other people who have maintained packs and, that, you know, their lives have been relatively successful. But, the, you know, but the one thing it's, you know, that what people don't understand is with any any pact, it's not for Christmas. You know, you've got to make it for the whole. Your whole life, realistically, you know, but well, if you are temporary and others are for life, um, for sure. Um, you know, I guess but the, it's an example of that would be, you know, like I want to accomplish something specific over a certain period of time once that is accomplished and once i've paid you and whatever i've you know agreed to do on my end to pay the spirit then you you know burn the pact and terminate it of, of working packs like that that were successful but um typically if you're making a pact with with one of the one of the big boys then it's going to be for life yeah absolutely the, the other thing as well is 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 um recently um, I don't know if you know this, there's, there's, uh, there's been, it happened in the oh, late 19th century, they found uh, a book called the Book of um, Two Ways. Uh, um, not many people have heard of this book. And essentially what it is, is it's an ancient um, Egyptian book 
of dying, which is probably about 4,000 years before the common era. And in it, um, they discuss what you have to do to go through this realm of consciousness before you can achieve death. Yeah, OK. And it's it's very, very interesting because when I was reading it, I always thought that Ra was the ultimate god of the Egyptian pantheon. Yeah. Then I read this book. This book was only for the adepts and it was only for the priest class. The actual god of the Egyptian pantheon is a god called Re. And I'm like, whoa, I'm 63 and I've just learnt what I allegedly knew about the Egyptian pantheon was utter garbage. That the actual god is Re. Yeah. No, no I Re, didn't. No, I, it shocked me. Re created the entire universe. Only only re formed the pantheon of the of the gods without re nothing would have happened and when one goes into the death scenario one has to understand that you are re this is where it gets very strange you are re you are that god and all the spells remind you of this fact. So when you meet the demons, when you meet the um, the snakes, when you meet the um, baboon gods, that you understand that because you are re, you have created these entities, and therefore you can control them. Yeah. But at the time, they're trying to kill you. So, you know, you've got to be sort of thinking to yourself, can I break through this realm of consciousness and understand that no matter how frightened I am, I am re, I am the power, I am the, you know, I am the universe, I am the one, and I can actually control this level of consciousness, which if you talk to very, very high ranking gym masters, they don't do the packs. They understand that they, their spirit, their power is that of what I understood as the re, the, the ultimate creating force. And they control the jinn, they control the angels, they control the demons by operating this um, universal force by understanding that they are this force. Uh, it doesn't happen overnight. Many of the um, higher magical sects teach this to their, their, their devotees. For example, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, that lovely kids program, you know, how I wonder what you are, is essentially a kind of guide to how one uses the soul to control the environment that they live in. And that's how the top gene masters do it. But to get to that level of consciousness, you've got to be able to go through all the realms. Yeah. Interestingly, the book, if you want to buy it, is over 350 quid. What's it called? I'm going to send it to you. You don't tell anybody. OK. All right. Agreed. <laughs> Is it written that's, in English? Yeah, that's okay. if you want it, of course. I absolutely want it. OK, I'll send it to you then. Yeah, it's like red flag to a bull with me. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll at least uh, I'll at least read it and learn about it um, and use it with caution. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a it's a it's a brilliant book. It, it teaches you it's really the the essence of Egyptian magic. Um, the uh, 
yeah, I, I can tell you the words that have been changed in it as well and stuff like that because they, they didn't, a lot of the spells have slight changes to them so they're not to work. But I know the original spells through sort of other disciplines, so it's, it's quite yeah, interesting. I, I definitely want the, uh, the legitimate spells. Um, I think it's really shitty that, that they do that with books. Like they'll alter something in a ritual so that it doesn't work. You got all these people trying and they're like, oh, that doesn't work. And it's because they've been given that one little piece of misinformation. And that's where it's really good to be able to communicate with these entities so that they can give you the missing piece of the puzzle. But um, yeah, uh, I think I think a lot of like rituals, like in the keys, they're like traps for for magicians. You know, they're full. The rituals are full of threats. You know, it's like you're going to summon a demon or a jinn and then threaten them or you fuck you know, and that's why you hear so many scary stories about people that dab with Western sorcery. It's it's uh, it's because they've fallen victim to misinformation. There you go. I've sent it to you. Thank you. I appreciate that. No I'll, I'll start reading it tonight, man. I'll start reading it tonight. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll if I find a write in there I want to do, I'll definitely ask you about it and make sure I've got the correct info first. Yeah, well, I'll I'll send you the information. So. Yeah, I, I think that's more or less it now, isn't it? You've got the book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I'll keep that between us, and uh, I appreciate it, man. Uh, yeah, we're an hour here. We're supposed to supposed to try to keep these at thirty minutes, but uh, I always get caught up talking with you, man. You want to cover anything else before you go? No, I, th I think it's really cool. It's great to talk to you once again. I've you know I've, I've learned a great deal, you know, which is which is good because you know like. In my opinion, learning is not about lecturing. It's about me listening to you, you listening to me, and you know, in the in between that gap, we learn something. Yeah. You know? Absolutely, and uh, I learn a lot from you as well, sir. I want to thank you for coming on. His name's Brian Barrett, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, he's the author of Gin Illuminated. Where can you buy that book? It's on Amazon. It's it's only on it's only on e uh, it's only on e. it's um it's very specialist knowledge. So uh, I would only recommend adepts really use it. You know, in all honesty, you know, to put it bluntly, which is good. Right. Well, so JS, yeah, sure. blessings, and I hope everything works out well for you. Seriously, you know, it absolutely will, and. Uh, yeah, thank you everyone for watching. Please like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, if you're interested in gin magic, check out this man's work. See you soon. Thank you.